Hare Krishna, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Welcome back. Before we begin to expand our study in reading and writing more Devanagari words, let's review some old material, specifically our quiz from the last lesson. So as always, we're going to have you transliterate words from Devanagari and write them in IAST transliteration. And we're going to have you do the reverse. Uh, we're going to have four words that are already transliterated, and you write them in Devanagari. So if you did this correctly, the first word you should have gotten was Devi. Devi is the female term for demigod, or specifically a demigoddess. But it's also applied to any uh, woman with a divine uh, attribute. Second word is Grhe. Grhe, which means in the house. The third word is Suradasa. Suradasa is the Sanskrit transliteration of the Hindi word Suradas, which is actually a name uh, for the great devotee poet who was blind, who has written many bhajans, many of which you can find on kksongs.org. And lastly, the fourth word is Ramayana. Ramayana. If you were to break this word down, you get Rama and Ayana. Uh, Rama is the Lord Ramachandra and Ayana, which means travels. So Ramayana literally means the travels of Lord Ramachandra, which describes his pastimes written by Valmkirishi. Now I'm going to have you write these words in Devanagari. And if you did this correctly, this is what they should look like. The first one, Hare, as in Hare Krishna. Uh, the term Hare is actually the uh, address form of Hara, which is the internal po uh, pleasure potency of the Lord. Number two is Goloka. Goloka, which is uh, literally translated as the planet of the cows, is also another name for Lord Krishna's uh, divine abode. Third is Vaidika. Vaidika. Vaidika is the Sanskrit transliteration. It's actually the proper pronunciation of the term that we often say Vedic, like as in Vedic literature. It's actually pronounced as Vaidika, Vaidika, anything that's pertinent to the Vedas. And the last is Mahabharata, Mahabharata. Again, literally this word translates to the greater India. However, it is a uh, scripture that is compiled by Vyasadeva, which contains the events of the royal dynasty of Greater India and all the events that led up to the advent of Kali Yuga. Bhagavad Gita is present in the Mahabharata. So now we're going to move on to uh, the topic of today, which is the Anusvara and Visarga. So if you remember from the very beginning of our series, we discussed the Devanagari alphabet and we talked about the properties, characteristics, and the uh, structure of the alphabet. And if you recall, there are 48 letters. So we studied the 13 vowels in lessons 1 through 3, and we studied the consonants from lessons 4 through 11. However, 13 and 33 leads to 46. What are the two missing letters that we didn't discuss? We're going to discuss that in today's lesson. So the first of the two letters, and I use quotation marks on the term letters, is because they're not true letters. They're more like diacritic markings. The first is the Anusvara. Anusvara in Sanskrit literally means the after sound. It's a diacritic marking that we add to characters to imply a nasalization. Using IAST, it's represented with an M with a dot above it. I know there are some older texts that uses the IAST, but it shows the dot below the letter, but it's actually the dot above the letter, which is uh, most accepted today. The representation of Anusvara is a dot, which is above the letter, and you can see that this is what it looks like on the right, on the margin of the slide. The unique thing about this is it is combined with vowels. It can be combined with, with vowels to get uh, a nasalized version of that vowel. Now, the proper pronunciation of the Anusvara is a bit tricky, and there's no clear consensus as far as what the true pronunciation is. Uh, you'll see that some will define this as a nasalization of the vowel. So instead of saying ka, you get ka. Instead of saying ku, you get ku. Uh, you nasalize the vowel. 
and some will indicate that this has a slight m sound. The proper philosophy of uh, the Anuswara is it is a representation of the letter ma, uh, but the details as far as why the Anuswara is used in some circumstances and the letter ma is used in different circumstances is beyond the scope of the course because it does require some knowledge of Sanskrit grammar and uh, sentence structure to be able to understand the difference. But as far as proper pronunciation goes, it can either be represented as a nasalization of the vowel or a light ma sound. And you'll see me use both here. In Hindi, it is used to represent a uh, nasal element combined with the consonant. I'm going to talk more about that in lesson 20 when we talk about the Hindi language. So if we want to write kam, we take the letter ka and we draw a dot above the uh, crossbar to get kam. Kam. If you want to write the syllable kam or kam, we draw the letter ka, or rather I should say the character ka by writing ka with the vertical line to the right to get ka shown on the left. And we draw a dot on top of the vertical line to get kam. Ka or kam. Con, instead of writing ko, if you want to write con, having a nasal sound, or com, you take the ko shape that you see into the left. Remember, the vertical line with the line segment coming up is the o uh, symbol. Ko, we draw the anusvara, or the dot, above the vertical crossbar, and you get con, or com. So now we're going to expand our writing abilities and include the anusvara. The anusvara should be placed after the vowel markings because, as I mentioned, anusvaras can be used in combination with vowel markings. That's one unique feature of the anusvara and visarga, which we'll learn about in just a bit. So let's do some reading and writing practice examples for uh, the anusvara. So the first uh, example is to write the word ahum. Aham. As always, the first step is to break them by syllable. And if you listen carefully, you'll see that there are two syllables, a uh, and hum. Next step is we're going to write the Devanagari character that corresponds to the uh, syllables that we have. So the first syllable is the letter a. Uh, the very first letter of the Devanagari alphabet and the very first letter that we studied in our series, a. Uh. The second syllable is hum. The ha is the consonant that is of interest to us, so we write the letter ha down. There are no unique vowels, there's no a ah or u or e or anything like that with the ha, so we just write ha as is. And then we apply any anusvaras if necessary, and we do see that there's an anusvara in the second syllable. Uh, so we draw the anusvara or the dot above the ha to get hum. So the answer to this question is this. This is how you write the word ahum. Ahum. Ahum means the, it's a personal pronoun, I, referring to the first person. I. Ahum. Let's do another example. We're going to write the name Narsimha. Narsimha. So we're going to break this by syllable as always. So if you listen carefully, you'll see that there are three syllables. Nur, Sing, and Ha. So we take each syllable and we write the appropriate letter and any vowel markings associated with it. So the first syllable uses the letter na, so we write the letter na. But we have the r vowel to it, so you get nr, nr. The second syllable is the syllable sim. You see that there is the uh, letter sa, 
with the short E sound. Remember, the short E goes to the left of the letter. So we draw it to the left of the SA to get C. And then the last syllable is HA. Remember, the last step is to factor in any anusvaras present. And you see that the middle syllable has the anusvara, so it's not C, but it's SIM. And to do that, we draw the dot above the horizontal crossbar to get SIM. So this is how we write the name Nrsimha. Nrsimha. This is uh, the name of Lord Krishna's fiercest incarnation as half man, half lion. In fact, if you look at the word, it's actually a combination of the words Nara and Singha. Nara means man and Singha means lion. Uh, for those who are North Indian, you may have heard this word pronounced as Narsing, Narsing with a G sound. That's not the proper Sanskrit pronunciation. Well, again, we'll talk about uh, the variance in Hindi pronunciation in lesson 20 when we get there. So let's do some practice in reading words that are already written in Devanagari. It's the same principle as before, except now we're going to be looking out for Anusvaras as well. So let's do our first example in this word over here. We're going to try to read what that word says. So the first step, as always, is break each character down. Make sure you recognize the vowel markings but that because that contributes to that character. So you see they have one, two, and three. Three characters. So we're going to transliterate each character. And you can see that the first character is the letter sa. There's no vowel markings involved. There is an anusvara, but we will take care of that in the next step. The second syllable is also the letter sa, but you see that there's an extra vertical line to the right of the sa. So it's not sa, it's sa. Sa. And then the last letter is the letter ra. There is no vowel markings or anything unique to the letter ra, so you just write it as ra, R-A. Then we factor in any anusvaras, and we clearly see that the first syllable has one. So we write the M dot, which represents that anusvara's presence. So you get sum. So reading this word, you get samsara. Samsara. Samsara means worldly existence. So we discussed the Anusvara in great detail. Now the last character is the Visarga. The Visarga, which literally means to discharge, is a diacritic marking which is placed to the right of the letter. Using IAST, it's represented as an H with a dot below it. Uh, sometimes people get a little confused because sometimes, or actually most of the time, we see the dot below the letter representing some kind of retroflex property, such as da ta da dharna and uh, their sh sound. However, uh, the H with the dot beneath it is not retroflex. It is a it is an aspirate. Just like with the anusvaras, it's also combined with vowels. And again, the pronunciation will vary depending on context. More often than not, you'll see that this pronunciation is nothing more than an echo of the vowel. So if you see a uh with the visarga, it's pronounced as aha. Uh -huh or e with a visarga is pronounced as ihi. Uh, one of the tough ones is if you have an ai pronounced with a visarga, how do you pronounce that? Uh, it's not pronounced as aihai, but it's pronounced as aihi. Or if it's o with a visarga, it's pronounced as ohu, rather than o o o ho, or anything uh, like that. If you have a, a plosive consonant that follows after visarga, it sounds like a uh, like a staccato, or it seems like someone's cutting you off and you have a little bit of breath coming out. So for example, in the phrase yogaha and karmasu, if you were to take those two phrases together, you get yoga karmasu. Yoga karmasu. So you have an ah uh sound. It is an aspirate, 
Whereas if the sentence ends with a visarga, you just pronounce it as aha. So in terms of our algorithm with writing words, it's the same, except now not only are we going to worry about anusvaras, we're also worried about visargas. So let's do another example. Let's write the word ataha. Ataha. As always, we're going to break them by syllable, and if you listen carefully, you'll see that there's actually two syllables. You have a and taha. Taha. Then we're going to write the appropriate letters that corresponds to our syllables. So the first syllable is a, and we just represent that as the Devanagari letter a, the first letter of the alphabet. The second syllable, the consonant involved is the letter ta, the dental ta sound. There's no unique vowel markings to the ta, so we leave that alone. But, but there is a visarga involved, so we draw the visarga to the right of the ta. And that is how you write the word ataha. Ataha. Ataha is a Sanskrit word and it means therefore. Next, we're going to write the word Dukkha. Dukkha. So the first step, as always, is break them by syllable. And if you listen carefully, there are only two syllables. Du and Ka. Then we write the consonants and any vowel markings associated with the letters. And you see the first syllable uses the letter Da but it has a short oo sound, so you draw the little shape beneath the letter to get du. There is a visarga involved, but we'll worry about that in just a bit. But for now, we'll focus on the second syllable, ka. It's just ka, there's no vowel marking, it's not ki or it's not ko or anything like that, it's ka, so you just write ka. And then finally, we draw any anusvaras or visargas. Here we have a visarga on the du syllable. Uh, so we draw the colon shape to the right of the du uh, shape and you get duhu. Duhu. So the proper pronunciation of this in Sanskrit is dukkha. Dukkha. In Hindi, we, we just say duk. Um, but we don't really pronounce the, uh, the uh, visarga in the word duk. But in Sanskrit, it's actually pronounced as dukkha. Dukkha. Uh, this is the word that means pain or sorrow. In terms of reading words in Devanagari, it's just the same as before. Only thing now is you're going to worry about anusvaras and visargas in addition to all the other things that we looked out for in the past. So let's practice our reading ability by using this very simple word. Let's see what this word reads as. So the first step, as always, is break it down by character. And you see that there are two distinct characters. And then we transliterate each consonant and apply any vowel markings if necessary. The first syllable has the letter ya. There are no vowel markings associated with it. So we simply write the word ya. And then the second syllable is the letter ta. Again, there are no vowel markings with ta, so we just write ta. Factoring any kind of visargas or anusvaras present, you see that there is a visarga to the right of the ta, so it's actually pronounced as taha. Taha. So this word reads as yataha. Yataha. Yataha means since in Sanskrit. In, uh, since as in ever since I began the series. Since. You also may see this special character called a Chandrabindu. Chandrabindu literally means moon and dot. It's a special Anusvara character that's marked above the vowel marking. 
Um, as you remember with the anusfaras, I told you that it can either be pronounced as uh, a slight ma sound or a nasalization of the vowel. However, the chandrabindu only implies nasalization. It's never pronounced with any ma sound. In Sanskrit, it's extremely rare, and it's typically found uh, with semi-vowels. Whereas in Hindi and non-Sanskrit languages, we see this quite often. We actually see this anytime uh, we're trying to emphasize this pronounced with some kind of heavy nasalization. In IST, there's no true transliteration for the Chandrabindu. Uh, more often than not, they'll either use the uh, Anusvara symbol or the Ma letter, even though it's not a true guttural sound. Um, I have seen one verse in the Bhagavad Gita where the uh, letter La has the Chandrabindu. And to represent that, they actually draw a little Chandrabindu above the letter uh, L to represent that it's Lung, Lung, Lung. So that's enough of material for this lesson. Let's have you practice some words in terms of reading and writing. And if you have any questions, please feel free to comment below or contact me via kksongs.org. Until then, I look very much forward to meeting you in Lesson 15, where we'll go over the answers to those questions, and we're going to be covering a very advanced topic in Devanagari reading and writing, which are the consonant clusters. Till then, thank you very much. Hare Krishna. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Uh.